Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hey, everybody. How's it going, dude? Well, this uh, part of this show... Hold on a second. Part of this show is dedicated to his and hers, Alaska. Uh, they had some interesting conversations about homesickness and uh, the second... And uh, being in Colorado and cannabis, I think it's a good subject to talk about, don't you? Hold on. (laughs) Wow. Well, I don't necessarily do that. (laughs) But there was a time. But anyway, I I had to laugh. It's been kind of a fun week. I, I actually had a chance to capture... And watch uh, uh, a few of uh, his and her Alaska's videos, and I've always enjoyed their stuff. Uh, they're good people, and uh, uh, I was really surprised he did a little video, and I bought a link to their site. So if you ever ever seen their videos, I'll put a link in our uh, description to his and her Alaska's uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, they're good people, and they do a really good presentation. But yeah, they were uh, in New Mexico for a little while, and then they uh, just got into Colorado. And uh, I have to laugh because, you know, me and Sherry from Washington State, where they legalized marijuana, cannabis, okay, cannabis. And uh, it's really changed uh, how we used to think about cannabis, I guess. But anyway, it was really interesting. I was really, really surprised that he was able to take a camera into a cannabis shop so i thought that was really cool um and so uh the things he talks you know talked about is very 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 true so in washington state i think it was three or four years ago they legalized uh, marijuana and yeah there's cannabis stores everywhere and it's um it's not unusual like in, especially in uh in downtown areas and stuff uh, where, you know, it's not unusual to kind of catch a whiff that someone's smoking this stuff. And uh, I have family members and stuff that uh, uh, use it for, uh, you know, social reasons and, and for medical. And so uh, uh, Sherry and I haven't really thought about hopping on board there. There was our time as teenagers, uh, but w- <laughs> I had to laugh because... When he, he uh, I don't know his name on his and hers Alaska, but uh, when he talked about it, he was using terminology that I understood from the teenage days, and I'm in my 50s, uh, you know, what a lid was and uh, a joint. And, of course, our stuff back then was like probably smoking the equivalent to the grass in our backyard. Uh, so anyway, but uh, uh, what we called, <laughs> it was weed compared to what they're doing nowadays. And it smelled, I'm, and I've been, I have friends I'm around all the time that smoke that stuff, not here, but up in Washington. And to me, it has a skunky smell now. It didn't seem like it smelled like that back in our day. And uh, I don't know how what the make of it, other than the, being from old school, um, uh, it was fun. It was something we did back then and stuff. But, uh, and it was always been, you know, illegal and, until the recent four or five years. And so it's hard to comprehend it as something uh, legitimately to use for social uh, entertainment. I'll, I'll say it that way. I, uh, I've underst- I understand that it's been very good for uh, some medical purposes, especially with uh, people that have seizures. Um, and then also people with chronic pain. Uh if it helps them in those areas, that's wonderful because nobody wants that. And so uh, I've heard in some cases that the just the oils from cannabis uh, can be used for treatment and certain things. And um, 
even for children that have like the seizures and things like that. So uh, I've never actually ate it. I, I, in fact, I, I, we thought it was a myth. I thought that if you ate cannabis, that do something to you. Apparently not. So I, I hear they put it in like candy form and, and cookie form and all that stuff. I'll have to try that someday. But I think it'd be really fun to do that. You know, like when you're camping, got a good campfire going around. You know you're not going to be driving. You're all just having a good time. And it's like, hey, let's pull one of those babies out. <laughs> I think it'd be kind of fun. You'd probably be giggling eating Doritos. <laughs> anyway, not a totally opposed to it. Uh, I worry about, uh, you know, drivers and parodies and things like that. But if common sense could be used, uh, along with just like alcohol too, uh, I mean, uh, common sense has got to be involved with that stuff. It's better that, you know, people are going to use it. I guess they kind of rank up there with prostitution too. It's like, you know, if you legalize it, can make it a little safer and it would create income tax for for the different states so you know times are changing open our minds a little you know you always hear me um you know sound like a grumpy old man but probably surprised you that that was my view on the thing but uh it's, it's never going away so you may as well embrace it if you embrace it how can we make it safer and can we uh can we get income tax from it or tax for, uh, revenues into it in our states and 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 uh, benefit from that? So anyway, uh, I really appreciate <laughs> that that video those guys did, and I highly recommend we get a chance. Look down in the description. Go check out their channel, Good People His and Her Alaska. And I got another subject I want to talk about that they brought up in a prior video to that one. So let's move on. So another subject that I heard uh, his and her Alaska's come up with prior to that, and I, I caught their title, and that's kind of what brought me in to see it because I, I kind of know the feeling, and that's being homesick. And so uh, he goes like, "How? I mean, how can that be?" And I got a kick out of the comment that he made, and it's a very, very true comment. If you happen to be living right now, before let's say before you're an RVer. In a place you truly love, whether like us, I mean, sure, and I like Washington State a little. Oregon, Bend, Oregon is our favorite area to live. And I can certainly see that I could, I imagine once I got used to it, I could certainly fall in love with Alaska. So what they're saying is, you know, they're here in the summertime, which is unusual because usually you want to be up in the Northwest or in Alaska in the summertime because that's when, you know, a chance to take your jacket off. And uh, maybe drive on a road that doesn't have an ice on it. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, uh, they're saying that they're starting to feel the effects of homesickness, and uh, and I and it's like I think that could happen to me and Sherry here in Arizona because we have family here, and of course they're referring to the fact of the beautiful things that they do in uh, Alaska, and me being a salmon fisherman, halibut fisherman, and a hunter. Uh, or prior to, uh, I don't do any hunting anymore. I could certainly uh, see how I would definitely miss uh, Alaska. And so uh, Sherry and I, I kind of brought that subject up to Sherry and I told her, you know, these guys made a video that I kind of relate with because we were starting to feel homesickness for a home we didn't have. And, and so we fixed that problem. And so, um, now it will be uh, like, I, in fact, the show I talked about before is I talked about Wonderlust is you always have that troubling bug. Once you've done it, you can't get rid of it. And uh, for those who can, I'm surprised they can. Uh, you'd have to be really good reason why you wouldn't want to travel. But uh, it's always nice to have a base. So I could see us traveling for a month or two uh, when we can get away longer and, and then at a certain point, start feeling the effects of uh, I kind of want to go home and, and back to my 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 own house, a little bit of elbow room, my own pool, my own backyard, my garden, uh, and my grandkids. And, and so I could uh, certainly see, and I really related with that video uh, of them. They're sitting out on a lake in their canoes talking about homesickness. 
And uh, I had to laugh too, as I'm the first one to go out in a canoe out in the lake and forget to take a uh, a life jacket. And there's some RV policeman or <laughs> parks ranger. Don't forget your <laughs> your life preserver, and you get kind of angry at the same time. You have to. At my age, you go, you know. I shouldn't get too mad. The guy's just trying to keep me alive. Why should I get upset? And, and uh, uh, you know, especially you know, when you come from places like uh, Washington and places. What, in the old days, it was more rugged. Uh, you have to laugh when you say, you know, what? You don't always take life jackets and stuff, or provided you know how to swim. But anyway, but it was uh, uh, funny to kind of see the uh, the reaction to that. It would be the same reaction I have is. As, yeah, I took the boat back in, got a life jacket, put it on, and, and I, I, I had to be humble. But at the same time, he was trying to save my life, so I can't really be mad at him. <laughs> but uh, anyway, getting back to the homesickness, I think that's something that I want to pass on. Remember, we talk about RV lifestyles. And uh, uh, before you come out or before you decide to retire, or before you do uh, snowbirding or sunbirding like we're doing, uh don't um, don't throw that. Keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, just like uh, when Sherry and I decided to buy a house, we kept the stipulation on our head as we know we're wonder. We have wonderlust. We know we like to travel, and so we do not want to get rid of anything that would prevent us from enjoying traveling. So in the last episode, you were talking about sunbirding, and. Uh, Basically, uh, uh, what we're going to do, at least for the first year or two, is take our RV up up north and then store it up there, and so we could go vacation up there for a while. And I imagine we'll probably work it down south a little more towards Central Oregon, which is another place we live for a long, long period of time, and uh, is uh, is always in our hearts. And uh, one thing, um, going back to his and her Alaska's uh, comment about being homesick. The one thing I do miss the most here in Arizona is uh, that the smell and the temperatures and the colors of fall. Uh, now, we can actually get some of that if we take a ride up to like the Flagstaff area and stuff like that. But when you live in the Northwest, it's really it's something special about the atmosphere of fall. And I used to really get excited about fall when I was a hunter because that was hunting season. And I'm a rifle hunter, not a bow hunter. So I uh, tend to be in like October. And uh, so the smells, the crisp air, where it's, it's really cold, but it's still not snowing and rainy. Uh, it's that uh, in-between time. Uh, the leaves got a sweet smell to them. Um, that's something I'll never forget. I'll always be homesick for that. And so, yeah. But anyway, I um, thought I'd give, uh, give those guys a shout out. Uh, good channel. Really enjoyed watching them. Uh, I don't get to see as many channels as I uh, want to. I occasionally watch some of the nomadic uh, gypsy ones just to get a good laugh. And then, of course, it always gives me something to talk about on a radio show. <laughs> and uh, um, But, yeah. Anyway, let me move on. It's been kind of interesting to watch Sherry and I uh kind of getting ready to do this trip up to Washington and then we're actually leaving in two days. So today I actually, uh, I, I had to break down and I decided to put new back tires on the dually and uh, $600 later and a lot of negotiation and begging for coupons and all that. I actually got uh, pretty decent heavy duty tires. I use Cooper tires uh, for just, I just had to do the back duallys. Um, I've got a lot of, a lot of miles on the last tires I had on there. But uh, anyway, uh, so I got it done for around six tw 612 bucks, And so I was pretty happy with that price. Uh, I almost went with the Michelins, which would put me in the 750 range and stuff. But uh, considering it seems like my dualies don't wear as fast, I, uh, um, I always make sure I put very, very high quality tires on the front. Uh, because of the diesel and the, uh, how heavy it is. I've always noticed when you put cheap tires on a diesel up front, they wear fast. So anyway, it'd be interesting to see how these Coopers do. So I'm very happy to get that because, uh, you know, this hot temperatures down here are brutal on batteries and rubber and plastic. So, yeah. Uh, 
keep that in mind when you come down here. Make sure that your tires are in good shape. Make sure you get good batteries because uh, the hot temperatures are brutal on batteries, by the way. So anyway, uh, Sherry and I are getting ready to uh, go, and it's I feel like a kid again. I, uh, we're actually not sleeping well because we're, I think we have to say the word excited. <laughs> it's like when you, when, you, know, you take a break and we're ready to go out again and uh, use the RV. Uh, uh, today was actually an exciting day because we got the RV out of storage and uh, just pulled it into our complex, which we don't have an HOA, so we're very fortunate. And where uh, the city ordinances will allow you to park an RV in front of your house uh, for no more than three days, which is we're going to leave in two. So uh, uh, this gives us a chance to uh, what I'm doing right now, since the RV has been kind of stagnant for five months, we're uh, uh, I've actually emptied the water tanks out, put uh, uh, bleach in the tank and f uh, f filled it up to help clean things out and then running water through all my different uh, outlets, uh, shower, the sinks, the bathroom, the horse, even the toilet, and just making sure I'm sanitizing all that because there hasn't been any water moving at all. And we have very, very, very high mineral water up here, down here. And uh, so I, I just think that would be a good idea to kind of uh, flush that through. So today I actually uh, emptied the tank, put about a cup of uh, a bleach in, um, started filling it, and it was actually only a, you know, a 10 gallons or so in it, actually started turning the water on in the different places in the RV to get that into the pipes. And then I filled the tank all the way to the top, and I'm just letting everything sit. And uh, uh, tomorrow, my goal will be uh, flushing all that out and getting the uh, bleach taste out of the water um, so uh, I'll actually probably flush the tank two or three times, run it, you know, run all the different uh, sinks and showers and whole works, and get it, try to get it all out of there. And uh, it'll take a little while, but uh, when it comes to making coffee and cooking like that, we actually always bring uh, bottled water. So, um, uh, in fact, the water down here is so yucky. Uh, I can't wait to get up north where the water is actually really good. And I'm looking forward to uh, filling the tanks up there. As soon as I get in about Oregon, uh, we'll start carrying a little more water than we normally do. And uh, but uh, of course, when I get up to Anacortes, and after we have our little vacation up there, and we put the RV in storage, I've got to empty everything out and get into the winterizing mode. So I better do a good job because I won't be there in the winter. And, I, and I've seen what kind of damage could happen if you don't winterize properly. So. Anyway, hopefully uh, I'll try to get some videotape of uh, what we're doing for winterizing. And uh, we actually are going to do something a little different with the RV. Uh, where the slides come in, there's always that little lip there. We're actually going to seal those lips um, just with tape or something um, to prevent any seepage of water still getting into the slide. And uh, over time, and, and the other problem is if you get seepage in there and it freezes, it will actually separate the slide from the uh, uh, body a little bit. And then when it thaws out, it leaks into your um, slide, which is inside your RV, and then you can get water in there. So uh, we've seen that happen before. So we're going to be cautious and actually seal the top edges of our slide with tape. I don't know if you ever heard of that before, but it seems like... Uh, uh, so during big rainfalls and stuff like that, uh, it'll prevent water from going into the slides, you know, seeping in slightly. If you just got a little bit of a, um, of a gap enough where water can get in there, but moisture and stuff like that will freeze up and actually expand and that will actually open it up. So uh, anyway, uh, I think the way to prevent that would be like taping it. So uh, and just a temporary tape. So when we retrieve it again in the spring, uh, we'll just pull the tape off, and hopefully it doesn't leave too much uh, residue behind, and we can always clean that up with isopropyl alcohol or something. But, uh, um, yeah, so that's the plan. But we'll show you what we're doing when we get up there. But Anyway, yeah, getting excited. I, I'm very excited to get back in the RV. Of course, the other thing today I did in the RV, now it's in the front of the house, is, is I'm decritterizing it. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, so, you know, I don't care where you're at, well, Washington, whatever, you know, we got uh, spiders and, and little cr 
critters that get into the uh, rigs and stuff. So I, I just felt like since we're not really going to be in it today, I just bug bombed it. And I didn't see anything. I saw a little bit of extra cobwebs in it and stuff like that. So I bug bombed it so I can't even really get in there because I was in there too long and I've been coughing all today just because I think I didn't hold my breath very well. So anyway, uh, then we're opening her up, start really pushing the air through, uh, get it all vacuumed up really nice, get out any cobwebs that did show, uh, show up. It doesn't seem too bad. And a little peace of mind in knowing that we just kind of debugged it you know say uh, uh, uh i never forget i, I swear uh was that maybe six months ago for just for i was up in the middle of the night sitting there and i heard this little bit of a blump 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 kind of sound looked over on a chair which was on a vinyl chair and there was a spider on there i swear as as big as a quarter uh, a half a dollar I never seen one so big and it wasn't eerie or anything is what they call a jumping spider <laughs> anyway i've never had to catch a spider that big before and of course i'm in my uh bathrobe and it's like but and then my wife gets up and she's like what are you doing i said there's a spider in there a big one and uh i got him oh, my gosh i've never grabbed a spider that big before but uh um, I, I they're not poisonous or anything they're just creepy and like, how in the heck did that thing even get in the RV? So uh, um, that's why I always tell people I constantly sprayed bug spray in the corners of my slides almost every week just because, you know, there's that little opening in there. And uh, if you're sitting still for a couple of months, uh, those critters will find their way in. Um, you might even put a temporary, uh, uh, I don't know, cotton or something in those corners because uh, it's pretty much impossible to seal those up completely and so anyway that's another thing we just did so yeah vacuuming bug bomb um finding out what we did you know <laughs> we kind of rampaged the rv a little bit when we got into the house here and, and uh, we got to make sure that we have at least all the necessities for cooking and dishes and um little odds and ends and so uh the other problem is since we can't buy a lot of condiments and stuff like that um so we're going to try to use ones we have open already load them into the rv because we you know we got to drive back with the rig without the rv and so we'll probably end up having to throw away a lot of condiments and things like that so we can't we got to be careful not to waste food and uh, that really bothers me to waste food so that's kind of the mission um and got the tires changed uh did an oil change too that i, I use uh, uh and i'm passing this on because some people ask about this kind of stuff uh i use that synthetic oil so <laughs> and i and i also believe a a diesel needs to breathe well so i'll actually make sure that i change my air filter that was another 230 bucks at jiffy lube so that hurt a little but uh uh it's a great truck, and you guys always hear me talk about my truck. Uh, it's uh, you know that one ton, seven point three liter diesel. It's a truck you don't ever want to sell, <laughs> and so uh, I want to you know. So to put tires on it to me is a privilege because the truck's been so good, and to give it good oil and all that stuff, it's just been a good truck. It's a comfortable truck, and uh, I'm going to try to hold on to her for a half million miles if I can do it. So anyway, that's what we're doing for sunbirding. Uh, I got some other things to talk a lot about, so let's move on. So just uh, uh, taking the time to remind you how all this comes up together, uh, I want to remind you that we uh, have a new sponsor, which our sponsor is uh, uh, something that we actually own. It's called Good Music Radio, which is at goodmusicradio.com, which is a full-time internet radio station and it's it's got a platform you won't believe the variety of music it has but it's based of all greatest hits past and present and what it's uh designed to be is this a, a, a radio station with a whole bunch not a lot of noise just music and uh it, it goes for, it, it plays a lot of classic rock and uh even some uh um hard rock but not like over the top and uh, actually some classics uh, hits that come from even 40 years ago and so uh, 
uh, very little commercials, very little talk. It's and it's available to you anywhere you go as long as you have internet. And if you go directly to the site at goodmusicradio.com, there's a link on there. Uh, if you're on your cell phone, press and download the little app, and you have an instant radio station. And uh, if you like the radio uh, show, uh, if you like the music, what's cool about it is you, it doesn't matter where you're at. So that's why I hate about good radio stations in a car. You're driving along a car, and pretty soon it's uh, uh, you know out of range, and you can't. It's hard to find good stations sometimes. Uh, if you are driving, a lot of times you'd be surprised that you have internet. So you can actually plug your uh, cell phone right into your radio. Uh, the newer, uh, you can either, if you have an old, old radio has a cassette player in it, you can actually get an adapter. The new radios now uh, allow you to plug in, uh, uh, auxiliary devices like a cell phone into your radio and you can just enjoy the music. And so, yeah, check them out. They're uh, goodmusicradio.com. You can also listen to it on a PC. It's just good, good, good music. Uh, the other thing I want to remind you is some of you folks still uh, uh, may be new to just hearing a radio station or a radio podcast and don't realize that you can download podcast software onto your cell phone. And then once you do that, it's free. Uh, I use Podcast Addict. There's other ones out there too, and you go into the search part, and you and and w there's other shows out there, and uh, uh, basically type in RV Travel. Uh, first thing you'll see some other you'll see other options, but you'll see RV Talk Radio, or just type in RV Talk Radio, and uh, we sh we show up right there. We also have another podcast that's if you like the southern states like Arizona, we also have Arizona Talk Radio, which is uh, aztalkradio.com if you want to check out that podcast. Those are both podcasts. Both can be uh, sh uh, are in iTunes and uh, can be searched up um, as a uh, qualified podcast. So, uh, yeah, check it out. It's really cool because then you can um, put the podcast uh, or listen to it on your cell phone, put an earbud in. Uh, during lunch, you can catch uh, 10, 15 minutes of the show and just go through the show. That's why they're normally an hour long. Uh, so you can uh, enjoy the show throughout the, the week or just at your lunchtime until you, you're finished with it. Then the following Monday, uh, if we stay, don't take days off, uh, there'll be another episode. And so, uh, and I, you know, and it, there's so many good podcasts out there. And you got to remember our show. Because um, I've I've had comments come in where he's like, well, he, he's not. Uh, uh, I <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of uh, DIY, and I've talked about it before because there's already some really great shows about that. Uh, we always stay on um, on subject of RV uh, lifestyles, and there's so many different kinds, and the good and good, bad, and the ugly, and so. Uh, if I tried to be like all the other shows, what's the point of having a show? You're supposed to have variations. Ours is about, you know, me and Sherry, of course, just like our, our, that's what our channel's about is Sherry and I. And, and, and RV Talk Radio is about our adventures and then the people we meet and, and then we analyze their lifestyles. And so, um, and we try to put a little humor to it, but at the same time, um, I always worry about misconceptions of some of the stuff. So the next subject I want to talk about is uh, the RVers that are converting or using or or doing boating uh, as a main or switching totally from RV to a boating scenario. I just want to bring up a few things that uh, you might want to think about uh, if you decide that's something you want to do in the future. So Sherry and I, you know, we looked into sailing because uh, once we kind of saw the uh, Gone with the Winds had a good point and uh, they decided to go into sailing, uh, we thought, you know, Sherry and I, have ne we've never sailed. We've always been a power boater kind of people. And so it was kind of a good little um, chance to say, I wonder if that's something we'd like. And it wasn't just that. We were watching some shows prior to that. Our favorite show is SV, S as in Sam, V as in Victor, SV Delos, D E L O S. They've been doing a, a around the world sailing type of show for six or seven years now, and they really do a good show. And I highly recommend if you start watching S. V. Delos, uh, 
to you know watch a current one but start from the beginning um it's, it's just good video and uh worth uh worth your time and so anyway so we you know, we um uh, we got an interest in sailing last year. We actually took sailing lessons and got certified in sailing through uh, the uh, ASA group and got uh, our certification. Uh, we actually could, found out we could get sailing lessons right here at Lake, uh, Lake Pleasant here in Arizona, which was like, oh, goodness, we have to go to the ocean. And then we also, you'll see in old videos a year ago, we also went to Texas and looked at some boats, and we went to San Diego and looked at some boats. And... Uh, uh, the conclusion was is we're getting worried we love the sailboats and we love the sailing but what we don't love is we don't have the time and sailing is a art sailing is a patient kind of uh, boating and uh, we will sure and I thoroughly enjoyed it but we really came to the conclusion we weren't ready yet However, we wanted to get back into boating because there's some great boating here in Arizona. You won't believe it, but with our uh, uh, reservoirs, uh, there's some really cool things to do, which had to really change sure, you know, our paradigm a lot. We were always looking for boats that were kind of working boats for salmon fishing and halibut fishing and crabbing. So we had to kind of change our paradigm of what boats were for and had to get a pleasure uh, cruiser. And so that was a little different for me and Sherry. So we ended up with, you saw, you'll see pictures of it uh, uh, in other videos. If you go to our playlist for boating, we bought a 1999 uh, Maxim, uh, which is made by Bayliner, kind of like their Cadillacs back then. Uh, twin screw, uh, 2800 SCR, which was the extended swim platform, so it puts us over 30. And we also wanted to make sure we had a boat that's trailerable so we can use use it in any of the reservoirs we want now but we we tend to like lake powell when it'll be a lifetime before we ever get to see all of lake powell it's a beautiful place but if some reason in the future we decide to get back over to the coast uh our the move the boat's no big deal because we have a very nice trailer for it so uh anyway some of the misconceptions of uh living on a boat full-time is you have to uh i think tetramania tetramania uh, Gone with the Winds, and uh, uh, I'm not sure if anybody else has started converting. And, of course, you know, once you've done the RVing for a long time, that's a nice change. But the thing you don't see is, like, uh, they have a really big 4755 bay liner, is you cannot imagine the fuel cost. Uh, when you're talking about 12 to 15 gallons an hour to run um, dual engines, uh, even diesels, uh, on a big rig like that, very costly, which, you know, it's not cheap to have a, a RV either. But I tell you, when you start cranking that uh, engines up, uh, you'll, you'll notice the best thing you can do is a nice slow cruise because you're keeping your consumption down in fuel. And uh, it's very costly to, when you get into the big, big boats, um, uh, the marina fees are amazing. And so if you anchor a lot, the bad thing about anchoring a lot is, I mean, you'll have a dinghy and stuff like that, but you're kind of stuck out in the middle of the water. <laughs> and you can only snorkel and fish so long, so much and eat. And so uh, there's, uh, if you're really into quiet time and reading, and that's the kind of thing you could do every day, um, then uh, you'll be all right. But you got to remember, it's just like RVing and these channels and stuff. It's what you're not seeing you need to know about. And so that's what shows like ours are hopefully there for is, if, um, for example, Sherry and I, you know, we love boating, but I would go nuts if I had to stay in my boat for a week. Um, it's small. And if I always uh, had to rely on just a dinghy to get in there. And then when you get into those areas and use your dinghy to go get food, it's usually overpriced and, and, and even for parts or anything like that. Um, it's always better to get that stuff inland or away from the marinas because they know that you're stuck getting your groceries at their location. So, they're, you know, you're, instead of a bag of Doritos for a buck, it's a bag of Doritos for three bucks. So, yeah. So it's those kind of things you want to consider and realize that those are realities of those kind of shows. Once again, don't misread me. It's like, oh, Rob, you're ranking on that stuff. No, I love boating. I already told you that. I love boating. I love 
all forms of boating. I love sailing now too. However, <laughs> it's our job if we're going to be a, a person who's responsible for maybe influencing people that listen to us uh, about RVing or boating or things like that, um, then we should make sure we paint the full picture and, and not, uh, if you watch some of these other shows, which are really, you know, like I said, kind of gypsies and they're trying to make money on stuff. They'll only show you the good, 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 good. And don't forget to buy our buck <laughs> or here's a link to the Amazon or please send money to our Patreon. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they won't talk about the negative too much. Uh, for us, uh, we find when we get a little bit edgy, uh, we actually get a lot more traffic, a lot more views. Um, so it's like, okay, well, if edgy is what you want, edgy is what you get. Um, not much. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, just be careful. Uh, if you're starting to think, well, maybe that's something we should do, uh, I start small. Get a and and if, I do recommend getting a boat if you ever get a chance to get one. Uh, really ask yourself what your lifestyle is all about. Um, will you need a boat that can be moved to another area? Uh, if you buy a really big boat, then to transport it is uh, very costly. And so to go from one land base to another by water can be very costly if it's a motorized boat and. Uh, uh, even a sailboat could take months and if you were going to hire a crew to take your boat to another location can cost a lot of money so yeah uh, those are the things that like we looked at maybe buying a boat in uh, texas and like to have it brought over to san diego and uh, i thought maybe i'll hire a crew to do that we're looking at price seven to ten thousand dollars to do that uh just wasn't it's like, oh my gosh, these are the things they don't tell you. And uh, the cost to get a boat fixed and things, especially if you have an older boat with a unique item in it, can be very costly. And I've been through that not with this boat, but boats in the past. So, uh, yeah, I've had all kinds of boats. Actually, we've had from custom weld boats, uh, pure fishing machine. We've had different kinds of uh, uh, bay liners, a 21 foot and a 20 four foot uh kitty cabins um no not kitty cabins they're actually cabin cruisers we uh, when the kids were little so they always had a place to you know we'd be out fishing the kids were playing downstairs with the toys in their jammies um and uh we actually had a kind of a cruising fishing boat probably the worst boat we ever had was a 28 foot um Bayliner catessa we had more trouble with the engine and some problems with parts and it was because uh back then bayliner was kind of switching away from the cobra out drives to um and engines and, and you couldn't get the parts very costly everything was customized and we ended up spending more money on that boat and we never went anywhere i was always fixing it we got it for a good price but uh sherry and i really just let's sell a sucker and got rid of it so we haven't had a boat since then until we got the maxim and we're really happy with the maxim and uh, uh, and we have our expectations in the right place. It's a used boat, and we know things are going to break, but uh, uh, it's not the end of the world. But, yeah, it's been a pretty good boat so far. Anyway, <laughs> ask me next year. <laughs> but those uh, you need to know about uh, if you're thinking about full-time living, uh, maybe switching over to a boat or sailboat or looking into it, make sure you say, well, are that, is that the kind of lifestyle that you would like, and, and can your... Uh, funds afford that uh, because you will be looking at fuel and you will s see the cost of food consumption and something like that a lot higher because you're going to marinas all the time and the fact that marinas can be especially uh they, i i can't imagine how much they cost down florida but uh, uh marinas can get pretty costly especially in san diego but washington you know, there's some pretty good deals up there not too bad but Anyway, food for thought. Anyway, I wanted to bring that subject up too, so well, let's move on. So to follow up on last week's um, show, I talked about gypsies, and um, I just used that terminology. You could call it uh, nomadics or, or RV freedom people or whatever you want. I was just kind of having fun with the name. And uh, it was kind of interesting because uh, I just picked up our RV 
from storage and I went to at the RV park that's across the street. So I went into the RV park and it's, you know, obviously summer here in uh, Arizona. So the RV park's a lot thinner and I had a chance to talk with the folks at uh, Eagle View RV Resort there by Fort McDowell. And uh, I said, well, it's looking kind of empty. And I says, but you know, still quite a few rigs in there. And she goes, yeah, it's all gypsies. <laughs> I had to laugh because it was just, just did a show about gypsies. And uh, uh, she kind of frowned at the same time. And, and it's she's seeing a, a trend that is actually more and more. So even though you've heard me uh, talk about uh, gypsies or, 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 or nomadic people, uh, I kind of see two varieties of it. Some are just uh, either single couple or family that are living um, in an RV uh, based on practicality and uh, sometimes it's based on their job and uh, find it um, uh, more accessible or more affordable to actually live in an RV as opposed to a home. And there's so many jobs out there now that uh, uh, require people to move around, and the RV made per makes perfectly good sense. And so it's not necessarily a trying to be a, a, a castaway or whatever you want to call it, uh, of trying to get out of the system as it is a necessity of, uh, of trying to uh, be mobile and have a nice living facility. The other thing I've noticed is um, people have jobs, but what what's changed over time is, you know, there was a time that if you're a welder or you work for an aerospace company or, uh, or you had a union job, uh, you made really good money. And so, you know, most people bought a house and went through the you know procedures of, of life in general. And so that's not necessarily true uh, nowadays. I mean, people have jobs and there's still aerospace jobs out there and stuff like that. And in a lot of cases, they're not making as much money. It used to be a time to be, it was uh, very respectable to have a good uh, uh, mechanic job or uh, aerospace or just automotive and stuff. And you made a very good income and you lived a good life and you could... Uh, provide for your family a really nice scenario of house and school and the whole works. And uh, I think that's changed an, with some folks now that uh, where they're only making, you know, maybe 16, 20 bucks an hour. And in some cases, some people say, oh, that's great money. But, you know, just to stay in a house and a couple of cars and kids in school and that stuff, uh, that can be difficult. So, uh, um, there's people that do it out of practicality. And then there's the other gypsies that you hear me bellyache about that uh, do it as a uh, uh, escape from reality type thing or trying to beat the system or and trying to get you to pay for it. And, I, and that part kind of irritates me when there's legitimate people out there in RVs that are using RVs uh, for a resource. Just like Sherry and I did. Uh, we stayed in our RV for 18 months before we bought our home. Uh, one was the opportunity to look around and two is it allowed us to save a lot of money and put money in the bank. And so once again, it was a resource or practicality for us for to live and to be mobile. So uh, I, I wanna make sure that there's a distinction between the two things I talked about. Um, I think it's important to realize that the RV can be a great resource for people in their careers um, and to either gain their careers or to be flexible with their career uh, to be able to move around to support their company that they're working for uh, especially if they do things state to state and then you can always have your family and home with you so yeah interesting stuff thought i'd bring that up and uh, let's move on So, uh, yeah, we're getting kind of to the end of the show, and I wanted to thank you for listening. Uh, I want to take the time to uh, thank uh, His and Hers Alaska. Uh, they put out some really good videos, which gave us a great, uh, some great content for our show. Uh, once again, I want to remind you that down in the description, we have links to their uh, 
YouTube channel and their Facebook page. And I do highly recommend if you get a chance, go visit his and her Alaska. Uh, they really put out some great content. Uh, once again, I also want to thank everybody. I, I know we haven't been in, uh, we're just getting our episodes back out again. Um, and uh, we have lots to talk about. The next time I do a show, we'll be on the road and we'll have a, probably a lot of funny stories. But once again, we're going from Arizona through Nevada, uh, through by Reno, Central Oregon, the back you now the back side of Oregon, and then coming over the back side of Washington, over I-90, and over to uh, and up to the northern part of Washington on the west side called Anacortes. And that's where we're going to actually store the RV. And then once we're done with that, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to stay a couple of days and enjoy the area. At the same time, we're going to get a U-Haul trailer and go into our storage unit up there and get kind of the most critical things we'd like to bring down to the house. Then work our way back just using motels. And, and we're going to stop in Central Oregon again and spend more time with family and then bring all of our treasures home and uh, uh, go from there. And then once again, uh, the next thing we'll have uh, for videos is uh, after we get that all done is uh, also uh, some boating stuff up in Lake Powell. And uh, that's a beautiful place. I'm hoping uh, to share some really wonderful stories with you about that. So anyway, I wanna thank you very much for listening. I wanna once again thank uh, uh, his and her Alaska. I did get send them a note ahead of time before this episode came out so they knew that this was coming out. And uh, I want to urge you to please, uh, you know, I don't pass on a lot of uh, channels or Facebook pages to go see unless it's really, I think, good content. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy those folks. So I want to, uh, once again, everybody be safe out there. Uh, get yourself an RV. Do yourself a homework. Once again, don't forget, we just kind of focus on the lifestyle here a little bit. So anyway, be safe out there. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to subscribe and watch some of our prior videos or listen to some prior episodes. Be safe, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye now.